Morning YouTube. Okay, uh, bit of a confession. Video blog, haven't really been keeping up with it. You might remember, I think the last video I did was just before the start of last summer. Uh, so I basically have done bugger all in quite a long time. However, that is soon to change because of a recent prophetic dream that I had. Okay, so I'll try and give as much backstory as I can because I realise there's a lot of information which to most people wouldn't make an awful lot of sense, let alone me in a dream state. Uh, so bear with me, but stick with me, it's quite an amusing dream. Okay, so the dream starts with me bored on a Friday afternoon with one of my good friends, Emily. Um, now, Emily I met through my friend Carmel. Uh, Carmel is currently uh, in a year abroad studying at the University of Melbourne in Australia, which if I put a picture of Australia here is somewhere down the bottom. I don't want to point at it too much because it might be in completely the wrong place. So anyway, this dream begins with me and Emily talking to each other, really, really bored on a Friday afternoon, and we just so happened to Google flights to Melbourne, thinking, oh, well, wouldn't it be great if we could just go and we could go and visit Carmel, we could do all sorts of fun crap and just have a crazy, crazy weekend. So we look it up on the internet and we find a set of really, really cheap flights. It means we have to go to the airport straight away and then we have to travel until stupid o'clock in the morning, but we can do it for like £250 for the whole weekend and both of us. So we throw caution to the wind, out it goes and get on a train to East Midlands Airport. Fun fact, I have never yet left the continent, so for me, going to Australia is amazing. By the way, um, the reason why I keep occasionally glancing over my shoulder is because I wrote the parts of the dream down when I woke up in the middle of the night, so that I wouldn't forget, so that when I came around to doing this video, I would remember. So I have bullet points for the important bits. So the flight comes and goes, we arrive in Australia, and we decide not to tell Carmel that we're there. So we go to find the bar that she works in. After walking around Melbourne for what seemed like hours, we then find this bar, and then we go in, sit down, and wait for one of the waitresses to come. And sure enough, Carmel comes trotting over, dressed up in some bizarre American waitress gear, which... I don't know whether that's whether what she dresses in. I've got no idea. I've never seen her working there. So anyway, she's in this sort of Frankie and Benny's type waitress gear, asks us what we want to drink, and then realises who we are, and we have this fantastic moment. We're like, yay! You know, we're all happy. We haven't seen each other face to face in, God, nearly a year. Um, and it's really happy and amazing. And we decide to go to the beach. Before we get to the beach, in a conversation in the bar or on the way there, I can't quite remember, I decide that I'm going to take a gap year and that I'm going to travel and this mad weekend is going to be the start of it. Uh, so I work out a rough plan in my head, I'm going to go to Japan, I maybe go to Thailand, I'm going to go to all the States. I come up with sort of like a rough route back home that's the long way round and I think, yeah, this is brilliant, I can do this. Of course, I'm still in a dream at this point, so I don't think, well, I haven't got any money, I, you know, I've got university to do, like, I'm supposed to be in lectures on Monday. Um, I don't have any clothes with me either, I just brought what I could in my suitcase and didn't really think, so... Anyway, uh, we get to the beach, and that is then when things sort of change somewhat. Um, the girls are laying sunbathing on the beach, and I decide to go for a swim. Um, and unfortunately, a shark bites off my leg. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't bite a little bit off, it doesn't just attack me, it, it actually completely bites my leg off, gone. Uh, I managed to get dragged back onto the beach by my friends, um, lifeguards, hospitals, and then I can just remember this is weird, it's, I'm talking like it happened to me. It happened to me in a dream, but it felt really real at the time. 
basically me being told that they'd never be able to reattach my leg because they'd have to find the shark that ate it and they can't so I don't have a leg I can't even remember which leg it was either is the really sad bit um, and so do I go home and then carry on with my university life and kind of feel a little bit defeated or do I go, no, this isn't going to stop me. I've set out, I've organised myself on this gap year, which must have taken all of five minutes to organise, but I had a plan, so damn it, I'm going to stick to it. So, with a heavy heart, I decide I'm going to go for it. I'm going to go on this gap year that I've organised. I am going to struggle, it is going to hurt, but I'm going to damn well go out and live and do it because this accident has suddenly made me realise how fragile that life is and that I should really just grab it by the balls. Um, but I then start the next part of my journey, go to Japan. Uh, I'm in a wheelchair. Uh, I can't really do an awful lot by myself, but I, I am. Um, I'm in a wheelchair and I have crutches and I can, I can just about get around, but I do need help. Um, and it's quite terrifying. I'm doing all of these things in these strange places, which normally is well out of my comfort zone and here I am <laughs> recovering from a horrible accident and I don't have a leg. I have one, I have a leg, I just don't have both. So after going and having an amazing time in Japan, having all the sushi that I could ever want, which for people who know me I absolutely adore sushi so that's great. So I then go to America which is this bizarre slightly fairy tale place of extremes. You've got deserts, you've got swamps, you've got mountains and you've got lowlands you've got this fantastic magnificent liberal place which is so socially advanced and developed and then on the other hand you've got this quite oppressive backwards redneck place you know that's really hostile to be in it really is quite amazing in just the variety of it when i get to the states uh i've been doing a blog of my journey all the way along. So at this point, uh, people have got to know about the fact that I've only got one leg, uh, that I've gone through this quite remarkable journey, which is at times quite lonely as well. I haven't got a traveling partner, I'm with myself. Um, and it's sort of steamrolled into this, not internet phenomenon, but I've got people following me and thinking, oh wow, this, what this guy is doing is great. You know, he's following his dreams. Um, so I have all of these famous YouTubers and bloggers and just internet people who then suddenly find me really interesting and want to meet up with me. Uh, so I go and meet loads of uh, American YouTubers who I like. Uh, I have I spend a day in Disneyland with Kurt Hugo Schneider and Sam Shuey, which I think is... I'm not even going to go into the psychology behind that one. But I then travel around and I, I see George Takei and I finally get to meet one of my actual heroes. He's amazing, I, ha I think I have dinner with him and his husband, we do some fundraising stuff together, it's really good fun. I then wake up, I wake up halfway through my tour of America after having done these fantastic things. I felt like this dream had a lot more places to go. It was kind of like when you're watching a film and then it ends and you think, it really could have done with an extra 20 minutes just to tie everything up. Um, so I woke up quite frantic, quite excited and all this emotion rushing to me and I think I've got to write this down. So two, three o'clock in the morning, I'm scrabbling around without any clothes on in my complete darkness in my room, grabbing a pen and I write it awkwardly on the side of my whiteboard so I don't forget in the morning. Um, I go over the dream in my head and for the rest of the night, I can't get back to sleep. Um, this amazing experience, I'm thinking, I could do this. I could actually, I graduate at the end of this year, uh, although I want to go back into doing university stuff to become a teacher, I could do it. I could spend a year out, I could then come back, and then I could have all of these fantastic experiences to then look back on, um, and then move on with my life. What a great year. Um, so I'm kind of a bit restless, can't get back to sleep for the rest of the night and I'm dropping off, I'm like coming in and out of sleep, kind of continuing parts of the dream but not completely, it's a bit weird and nostalgic. And then the last thing I remember before I then woke up in the morning was 
what happens if I actually go to Australia? What happens if I start this amazing journey and my leg actually does get bitten off by a shark? Honestly, I mean, it happens even on safe beaches that have shark nets. They get through and occasionally people are attacked. What happens if I then go and everything that I've done up until this point comes true? Um, not only is, like, shit, I don't have a leg, but p the last part of the journey contained, like, me effectively getting sympathy off people for having this terrible thing happen to me, and then me overcoming it, and that was amazing, that was my journey, that's why it made the dream so powerful, but if people have seen this video and know that I had a dream about it, then if it happens, they're just going to think that the entire thing was premeditated, that I actually planned a shark biting off my leg. Thankfully, that's when reality then kicked in. I realised, don't be stupid, Ollie. You can't premeditate a shark. For a start, sharks don't have agents. Where the hell do you hire a shark from? Secondly, even if I did get hold of a shark, and even if I did, then implant it onto the beach with me and loads of other people there, what are the chances it's going to attack me? Option three, there's no guarantee that it would attack my leg, let alone bite it off. It was just as likely to bite my arm off if I premeditated the whole thing, and that would just make me look like a proper idiot. Oh, there's the guy who actually premeditated a shark attack. Didn't get his leg like he thought. No, stupid idiot got his arm bitten off instead. Shun him. Shun! All in all, just premeditated shark attacks. They're not feasible, they're not practical. There are better ways of doing it. You could get trampled by a rhinoceros, eaten by a... I was about to say eaten by a shark then, but no. If you've enjoyed this video, then make sure that you subscribe to my channel. Uh, I have two previous videos to this one, which you can check out by going back onto my channel and looking at my uploads. I'm Sir Frogstar, I will see you later.